Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to VotingTechTalk.com. Uh, we've got a question from a fellow voter, and uh, this question relates to battery isolators. Jeff, can you have a battery isolator with two inputs, one for the alternator and another one for short power battery charging? Three outputs would be a starter battery, house battery, and cluster. Okay, good question from Joe, actually. So the answer is yes and no. In the past, battery isolators that were built with diodes, which cause about 0.7 volt of voltage drop uh, for current to go through it. So you could have voltage in 14.4, voltage out 13.7. They, some of those models had two in, three out. They did. They did. Now, the problem with those devices, and it's great, they work, is that you pay a high cost by voltage drop because of that diode. So, hence why newer devices, which are battery isolators as well, but are accomplished via FETs, F, Foxtrot, Echo, Tango, S being plural, FETs, what they do is they have negligible about the drop. Now, the challenge as of today is that there is like Victron, for, for example, their Argo FET does not have a two in, two out, or two in, three out, or two in, and I've seen even four out. They don't have that. So first part of the question, to my knowledge, there's no uh, battery isolators that are FET driven um, that have two in, two out, or two in, three out. If one of you do know about that, please post down below. Sharing is caring. All right, excellent. Now, second part, what about bringing uh, both the alternator input and a battery charger input to a single device? Well, that was where it becomes a more philosophical question. Not sure if I pronounced that right, but I tried. And it really stems from, do you really want to have that many eggs in one basket? And I would say, the large majority of boat owners and people that work on boats, like 99%, 99 higher percent of all boats I've ever seen would not do that. And I'm talking probably one boat out of maybe, I, I don't think it's one out of a hundred, would actually have a battery isolator that would take charger inputs and also alternate inputs. Now, what are the reasons are? I can only speculate. So it's a pretty rare thing. I do see it. Generally, it's a way for people to limit the amount of wiring going to the respective battery bank. So they figure, well, I can run the charger leads to the battery isolator, and I read the alternator there, then I'm going to save on wiring, and I only need to run now a larger wire that can accommodate both, hopefully, to run at the same time to each respective batteries. And I've seen it, I've seen it. Never done it, but I've seen it. Now here's, here's my question, right? And it's again, for you guys uh, or gals out there that have this set up, my concern has always been, well, if the fuse on that circuit to your house blows, not only are you losing your alternator charge, but you're losing your battery charger charge. And then, so not only is single point of failure the battery isolator, because you lose that, you lose everything. You lose alternator and battery charger, and you're like in trouble. That's one problem. But if you lose one circuit breaker that connects both the alternator and the battery charger to your battery, and for whatever reason, your alternator, I don't know, your battery, something happens, and the breaker trips. Well, now you've not only lost one source of power, you've lost both. And that's always been my hesitation. Right? Not to say it's wrong, but I'm going, what's the win? Right? What's the win of choosing and doing a single battery isolator? And I understand that it's doable. I just never understood why you would take the risk. And so normally we run the alternator to the battery isolator and battery chargers, many of them have multiple output leads, like two, three. And so generally we run those respective battery charger leads directly via fuse at each respective battery. And so the battery charger system is completely independent from the alternator system. And let me add a little bit. In the summer, when we're all boating, 
or whatever your cruising season is, let me tell you that when you lose one, I, you lose your battery charger or you lose your alternator. And it doesn't matter how you lose it because if it's not working, it's like losing it. The stress level goes up. <laughs> it really does. And I love that business of solving and rescuing people from imminent uh, doom of their holidays. And let me tell you, gambling on that is something that rarely pays off. And the sense of urgency for many of us is when we're on the water, we want to be on the water and stay on the water as we planned and hoped for for a long time. So my suggestion is there's probably, to me, right? To me, there's not enough of a win without knowing the specifics, right? I would need to be sold on why you should uh, put all your eggs in one basket. And that would be my answer, Joe, to your question. I think it's a great question and good on you to ask it because there's always pros and cons to everything. And thanks for all of you for watching this video as well. Let us know your comments and your feedback below. And if you've got that setup that I talked about, let me know why. I'm curious. I want to know why you did it on your boat. If you're curious, we've written whole articles about this. Go on our website, search it out. Uh, and we've got a lot of other uh, tech talks about this very topic. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, please do. Um, it actually, it really does make a difference. It encourages us to keep posting. So if you're watching this video and haven't had a chance to subscribe, we really do care because the more of you that are watching, the more of us over here are willing to put, spend more time in creating content. So thanks again.